Hey YouTube friends, hope you guys are doing well. Um, I decided to take a little bit of time just to catch up again with you guys and just going through some of the questions that you guys asked uh, probably like the last month and uh, yo, two months ago. Um, yeah, so let me quickly run through the questions. Hope you guys have all been doing well. Um, I think from a tax perspective, all this happening is uh, beginning of July. The personal taxes are going to start, so I think you must have started getting all the documents ready for um for the personal tax returns um yeah so let me go through the comments and all the ones that i haven't in answered so far and i'm just going to try and answer them for you as best i can um obviously i don't know everything but we can have a look um i think the first thing is from melody grunewald she asked the question over there so how do i check for duplicates in my banking so let me just quickly log into sage Yes, so I just am um, logged into the demo company quickly. So the best thing to do with your banking is obviously um, if you go to transactions, there's two places you can go into the banking screen itself. And then over here, you will see the list of all the transactions that be under, under new transactions. So if there are duplicates over here, you should be able to pick them up. And the other place that is also good to go look is if you go to banking and you go to reports and you go here to bank and credit card transactions, this report over here, and you say that you want to look at um, whichever account it is, there's a coincidence, um, the current account, and you want to look at that report. Remember, mm, let me maybe go a little bit further back. <coughs> if we just say maybe year to date, and I look at this report over here, like I said, the best thing to do is to take your actual bank statement that you get from the bank, then you go see what your balance is at the end of March, see if it corresponds. If it doesn't correspond, then you start working backwards. So it depends, you'll go check at the end of the 10th what was the bank balance until you start finding where the, the, the balance went out. And then obviously they will pick up if there were duplicate transactions. So that is the best thing. You can use the, the bank reconciliation screen on Sage as well, but I found it's not, it's not an easy system to use. It's actually easier just to work through this report and just um, find the duplicate transactions over there. Uh, zero question. So let's quickly see now if one aims to work in retrospect, how can one get invoices from being approved to paid, um, considering that everything is being done in retrospect now, currently nothing different year of assessment. Mm, so um, I haven't got access to, to zero at the moment, but I know that you've got the option there to open the transaction, then you need to edit the transaction. And normally, if I remember correctly, with the invoices, you actually have to delink the payment from the invoice. Then you open up the invoice and press edit, change the invoice, and then after that you've got to go back to the payment and then reallocate the, the payment back to the invoice. So that is um, just, uh, it's just a stupid way of, of doing it, but that's the, the process that you have to go through on zero. Um, income tax. Um, how does the tax work when you work, when you have several companies? Um, this is a consciousness. So that question over there, remember every company itself is a separate legal entity. So every company must go through the whole process by itself. So if you've got company A that's got a profit of 10,000 Rand, company B a profit of 100,000 Rand, company C 200,000 Rand, then each company, because it's a basically individual on its own, each one of them will be assessed separately. See, so that is basically what will happen. If you've got several companies, like I say, um, yeah, that is how the tax works. Each company is for himself. They have to work out the tax over there. Um, the next question is a UIF one. So, <clears throat> my late grandfather was retrenched from eight year workplace and later passed on. Now it's three years since he passed on and wanted to ask how to go about to apply for his UIF. <clears throat> the best would be to go to the Department of Labor and go speak to them over there to see if you can. But I know that there's normally a certain time period that he can claim. So, if you miss that window, then I'm not sure whether you'll still be able to access that claim or to, to process that claim. But maybe go see them at the Labor Center and see what they're saying. Um, let's quickly see. Uh, Justin, can you please do a video on explaining how forex traders pay tax and how they can cut them? Um, remember, if you make money, you're going to pay tax. So there's no way of getting around that or cutting ways to cut corners because SARS is becoming like a mafia. So they know exactly how much money is going through your bank account and all that type of stuff. So it's best to clear all your income um, forex traders. So just the, the short principle of that, and it's the same as shares, that for every transaction that you make, you're either going to make a profit or a loss. So you need to combine all of that. So you should be able to get on your forex system somewhere there, uh, a report to show what the total profit was for a certain period. Obviously, we look at financial year ends, um, financial years, and then during that period, you're going to have to look to see, see what the total profit. So if you've got maybe there's a point, there's 100 different trades and 50 of them made profits of 200,000 rand, then 50 made losses of 100,000 rand, then the Total between the two will be 100,000 in profit, and that is what you're going to be paying tax on them, you see. Um, yeah, but it is a little bit more difficult to get those reports for Forex. 
I try this. I mean, as quickly as you can come text. Um, I've been following your content on YouTube. Thanks. I have a question. If you have time, maybe you can explain. Does this process you explained above apply to new companies after registering? So this process um, to applies to any company. As soon as you um, register a company at SIPSI, then automatically that company gets issued with a tax number. So whether that company is trading or not trading, you still have to do the tax returns, even if you don't have a profit over there. Yeah, so because you'll see, otherwise you're going to start getting penalties and stuff um, from the receiver of revenue. And there's a little bit of a process that you have to go through before you can actually access the stuff on SARS. You see, first you need to go to through a process where you activate the representative of the company. Then you need to link the company to your e-filing profile, and then after that you can access the returns. Quick, you see. A uh, question about um, um, customers and invoicing. Um, live with Parkinson's. Let's see. Thanks for the videos. How do you import CSV data from another system, such as all data into Sage? Um, I know that Sage has got some functionality of importing data. It's not something that I work with often, but what I can uh, um, recommend is there's a company called Cloud Convert, and they. Um, Let's quickly see. It's, it depends on what you want to do. It depends as you want to convert over to Sage. And then I think they do it for free, actually. So you contact these guys. Obviously, they try and push that you do your subscription through them. But then you send them the data file. They take it and then just um, pop it over into Sage. You, so you get a username and a password. And then after that, you can start using Sage them. So I think that is the easiest, actually, just to use them up. Some of my clients use them in the past and their service is really, really good. You can do it yourself as well. Like I said, there is um, uh, on each one of these over here, you will see that um, if you go to customers, um, let's quickly see, where was it? Special, no, it's not the list, list of customers. I think it's somewhere over here. I've worked with it before. We can actually import customers. So you see it under the list. So the only thing you must just make sure is that you've got those CSV files in the right format. As soon as something is wrong, like your dates or your fields and stuff doesn't match, then it's a little bit of a problem. Um, but to, to pull data over from the whole accounting package from one to the next, uh, there's, there's a little bit of work that needs to be done over there. But check those guys, Cloud Convert, see if they can't assist you with that one. Um, yes, <clears throat> so next one. <coughs> so how much? What or how much should I put in the supply control in configuration? Um, I think you are probably old pastel one. Uh, persons, remember these account numbers doesn't is not relevant to the online one, so it don't actually work with account numbers. And remember, they only work with categories. Um, so if you go to your 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 companies, you'll see that over here under your accounts, and you go to list of accounts. So they just sort it according to names, and they sort it according to categories. So we did sales, cost of sales, assets, non-current assets. So all those those old numbers from Pastel is not relevant when you start working with Sage. I hope that answered your question. Let's quickly see. Uh, thanks for the video. They are helpful. Please, how do you pass a journal on tax and withholding tax paid on an invoice? Mm, so that is an interesting thing. So if you can go into your banking and um, let's say, for instance, you receive a payment. Let me just get to the last transaction over here. And let's say, for instance, you receive a payment from from a client. <coughs> so what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to split the transaction over here. Uh, come on. <coughs> so customer. And let's say, for instance, I wonder if it will actually allow me to split it over here. Let me just move myself out the way here. I'm not allowing me to split the transactions over here now. Come on. Let's see. Let me just give me a second. Let me just quickly check over here. Okay. Yeah, so what you're going to do is, let's say, for instance, like this transaction over here now, we're going to split this this deposit now. So if, the us for instance, they paid 80940 but there was, there was, let's say, for instance, there was a withholding tax taken taken out on this and then what you will do is you'll put the the amount over there of a hundred thousand rand which needs to be allocated to that one and then the second line over there you're going to have an account over there that's going to see withholding tax deducted um it will probably going to be like a liability or asset account so if let's say for instance um uh, that is the account that you're looking at and then you put over there minus minus fifteen thousand rand and so that is what it would look like then so the actual payment um, let's just take that off because there's no VAT on that. So you can see the actual payment that they would have paid. Um, 
was, what was that, 85,000 and uh, the payment total comes from the other page. But that is basically how you would do it. <coughs> Let me just quickly see. Come on. So you can see the balancing figures 19060. So that is what it would look like. So you would take your account and then there you're going to say withholding tax withheld. 20,000 rands. Remember that will normally go on your balance sheet as a, as a tax credit for you. And then the client payment itself will then be the 100,000 rand. So that is the way that you would do a transaction like that. It's not something that you would do often, but that would be my suggestion of how to do it. Yes, I hope that answers your question. Quickly see, Carmen, um, you're talking about business structures. I started the business this year and got registered last month. I was worried that I was going to pay Sovereign taxes to pity buying that was going to kill my profits and eat my pay. But now that I understand the risk of sole proprietors, I feel like I'm confident that will be personally and legally protected. And I agree with you for the year. They such as mainly the sole proprietors at the moment. They and we had one client now where they ask for a thousand slips um to prove of the actual expenses. So imagine you have to take a thousand slips through to SARS to prove the actual expenses. This is crazy. Tax numbers. <coughs> do I do I have to live in South Africa to get a tax number from that side? Uh, I don't think so. Because you can do it as a foreign national as well, because you just use your passport number. You'll see the one screen over there that asks you, are you a South African citizen? So you're just going to say no, and then you obviously use your um, your passport number. So the tax incentives. Um, as I really thought this was for the tax in March 22 to 3, to be claimed in July 23, if the system was installed in December, would I be able to claim it in the 24 tax year that runs from March 23 to 24? I don't think so, because they say specifically that the registration has got to be from the 1st of March 23, um, sadly. <coughs> that is, you've got electricity, that helps. Um, let's quickly see, <coughs> can the selection tab be removed? from this quote screen. It's annoying to have to add an item for every every time we add a line of description. The description is good enough. So let me quickly show you something over here um, on the quotes. So what you must do is, is if you go to quotes, and I think I talked about it in the setup um, in the setup video. So if you go to quotes and you add a quote over here, I think you are talking about this one over here. So what you will do is instead of using item use account, and then <coughs> obviously you have to use there will normally be like one that says other sales. I'm not sure what these guys did over here. But as it points as you put it over there, and then you would do the description. And then over there you would pay, say, a thousand rand or whatever the case might be. So we, by default, unless if you're physically keeping track of items inside Sage, then I would rather just use the accounts because it's much easier. Because if you, as soon as you work with the item, you have to scroll through this whole list of all the different items that you're trying to find the right one of, you see. So I would just personally use account. Make like one or two income accounts, and then obviously the description you can change, like you always do. It. That <coughs> this, the, the, the selection, um, the selection tab doesn't actually appear on the quotes and stuff as you would know. <coughs> Let's quickly see um, another question. I'm currently working full time, <coughs> and I'm getting paid to do the work, and I have an RP5. I'm registered and paid tax monthly. I would like to know. How it will work if we were to start a YouTube channel and begin generating money from that channel? How will this affect my tax now? Can I go about paying tax on the second form of income? So what will then happen is on your tax return, there's a and there's a little blocky <coughs> after you, you you open your return as a standard one, and then right at the last question they would ask you a question to say that have you received any other income that you would deem to be taxable? You would say yes, and then after that is the place where you put that extra income in there. <coughs> so if it's just and this brings us a thousand rand a month, then it means a twelve thousand rand on your tax return you're gonna add there. Um, if you have to increase expenses to produce the income, then there's another place <coughs> where they ask you that you perform any form of trade, then you would open that blocky. You would say that you earned twelve thousand rand, you bought the microphone of a thousand rand, this for instance, which means your taxable income is gonna be eleven thousand rand, then that eleven thousand rand is gonna be added to your other income and then that's the amount that you have to pay tax on. Um, yes, <coughs> so hopefully that answers your question. Um, so next question, user. Uh, great video, do you recommend any booking software? Um, they're talking about VAT. <coughs> so I'm not sure. Um, I don't really know of any booking software. And the one that I use for myself is called Calendly, where I block out certain times when people can make bookings with me, and then 
they just go online and send them all the links and stuff automatically so that's a booking system that I'm using just to book appointments but I'm not sure what type of bookings he's referring to over there Sage <coughs> how do I delete a price list on Sage I get an error that this it says the price list is linked so what you're gonna have to do is if you go to Sage you're gonna have to go to items list of items and then you're gonna have to go through items to see which one of those items it is that's linked to that price list over there and take that off you see what you see price list there it is over there <coughs> so you're gonna have to say which price list that is so you can just delink it there before you can delete the price list i think that is probably where the problem lies so just go dig around a little bit there i'm sure you're going to find the answer there <coughs> so next question uh, cryptos and <coughs> so does crypto tax also have tax certificates when your investments grow when you make transactions so there's um, i don't think there's there's tax certificates you would download those csv files to show what the total was of the actual transactions that took place so remember it's not the growth it's only once you sell it so if you buy something for 100 rand and, and that investment grows to 300 rand there's no tax payable on that but as soon as you do something with that money so if you convert it to dollars to take it out and you convert that back to three, 300 dollars i'm just taking that as an example then that growth of the 200 dollars is what's going to be taxable but get in hold of these guys, um, Thomas Loban, so they can assist you with those um, crypto taxes. It's a quite a specialized field, um, but that is the basics of how it would then work. <coughs> um, let's quickly see. Um, Ruth Perez. And would you recommend Sage for an accounting business? Um, we would use it to create accounting for all our clients. I understand it's very really difficult to download bank statements, transactions onto it. <coughs> I would say that Sage is good. Um, if you've got the... If, if you registered as an advisor with them, then they've charged, they, there's different packages. Obviously, the guys are going to be using the full package and they have to pay the full fee. But I know that for accountants, there's a certain one that you can use. If you're only going to be importing transactions once a year, then just for that month, you'll be paying a fee for that specific month. And then, um, and then, then you just that month, you'd sit and do the processing for the full year. And then after that, you you disclose that that guy's books again until next year when you can be working on it again. Then you can carry on. Uh, we personally don't use that function, but I know that it is available. Um, and then are you available to free uh, free consultation for non-cloud-based USA Sage? Um, <coughs> I don't really work with the non-cloud-based, um, and I'm not sure what the USA Sage one is. It should be very similar to the ones that we use over here. Um, you can make an appointment and we can have a look. Um, it should be similar to what we're using in South Africa, though. Um, let's quickly see. Income tax. How much do I pay tax if I'm a commission agent only things? So, <coughs> commission agents, it doesn't matter what you earn, any form of income, you are going to get taxed on it. What we, I normally recommend is if you check out this little website that says your tax, so then you can go see. <coughs> what you must keep in mind, that if it's the first year of the month, and you earn a commission in expenses of 50,000 rand, and then you can see it will calculate what the tax was for one month. You see, that depends as you work for three months, and only after three months into the financial year, you earn commission for the first time 50,000 rand. And then if you calculate, you can see that it works out that if you take 50,000 over three months, then the tax only works out 4,000 rand. You see, so commission earners, because their salary fluctuates, it's always good to do a year to date. Um, calculation. So now we are already in June, so it's May, March, April, May, June, so we're four months into the financial year. So it depends on in month three, you got a 50,000 rand commission, and in month four, you get another 50,000 rand. So now it means, remember, we got four and a half thousand rand there for three months. So now if you could put 100,000 rand in for four months, let me just make sure I've got enough zeros. 100,000 rand for four months, then we'll see how the tax is going to jump now. So it means that your next commission payment the second 50,000 rand is almost going to be 10,000 rand worth of commission that you have to deduct because your tax system works on a year to date tax system. So if you work for three months, and you, or four months, and you earn 100,000 rand, then for those four months you should have paid 13,000 rand. So let's it means for the next three months you don't make any sales, and in month 10 you can make another sale for another 50,000 rand. So now if you could do the calculation, 150,000 rand. Remember, 13,000 is at the top there. So now I can see for the full year, for 10 months, it's only 12,000 rand. So then on that commission payment, you wouldn't actually be paying any tax. So I would recommend that if you work with commission, 
some people talk about text directives, but that's uh, I personally am against it. I've seen people burn their fingers badly with text directives in the mean in the in the past. So just ask the guys that he's selling for that they just load you onto the payroll package. The payroll package just does the calculations for you, and you know at the end of the year they've deducted enough tax. <coughs> Let's quickly see how to pass a journal entry to reflect an internal transaction with a non-cash effect in the bank. Mm, yeah, journals, um, I would normally recommend that you leave journals for accountants to work with, but this is the place where you're going to be doing journals inside the set of books, and then if it's whatever the journal is that you want to do, so if you want to adjust something on your sales, you'll put the amount in there, and there's a for instance here, whatever the account is that you want to use, so that is the way that you would process journals. You would do that, and then there's a market review, but <coughs> journals become can become very technical, and uh, for normal people, I would rather recommend that your accountants does the journals for you. Just quickly see, um, here was a good question. Um, uh, thanks for the top-notch info, much appreciated. <coughs> the cost of administration, you mentioned about three to 5,000 rand a year for company. What factors make up the administration costs? So if you look at that video, remember that I spoke about tax on that one end. So during the year, remember there's two provisional tax returns that you have to do. And then at, and at the end of the year, there's a final tax return that you have to do as well. Then at SIPSI, there's a return that you have to do that side as well once a year. So if you use the services of an accountant, for our provisional tax returns, we charge 700 rand each. So for those two returns will be 1,400 rand. The final return for the year will be another 1,400 rand. So that gives you 2,800 rand. Then if we had to do the SIPSI return for you, there's probably like another 1,000 rand. So then you're getting to 3,800 rand. So that's why I said 3,000 to 5,000. But that's just for a dormant company. So as soon as there's transactions involved, if the business starts trading, you still have to do financial statements to do the tax calculations and stuff like that as well. So then you're probably looking at a minimum of 5,000 rand. Good man. Yeah, I hope that answered your questions. Um, thanks for asking all the questions. The, the easy ones, I just want to just reply quickly just to send a message, but the ones that I want to discuss with you guys, I obviously just keep them aside until I've got enough questions, and then I just do a quick session like this to answer your questions. Yeah, but thanks for all the comments and thanks for all the likes. Um, I'm planning to maybe launch another two videos really, really soon. Um, yeah, thanks for watching. Chat soon. Bye.